Hello and welcome back to part two of uh, this large uh, envelope uh, that I received from Mr. Witty of um, cards and covers, uh, many with flag cancels. Really, really interesting stuff. He also sent me some German stamps uh, that were overprints, so I think there was um, Danzig overprints, China overprints, and Moroccan overprints, which are really exciting because I don't have a ton of those. And uh, we'll hopefully get to those at the end of this. If I didn't put them in the previous part, I know I promised them in the previous part, but that's when I thought I was doing a single video. Um, he has overwhelmed me with uh, so many uh, covers. I think we went for half an hour or so um, in the uh, first video, and I figured it might be time to split it into two. Um, I know attention spans are shorter than ever, um, and I figured half an hour even was pushing my luck. Uh, in a half hour video, I'm lucky if I get people to stay for 10 minutes, according to YouTube's uh, statistics. So, um, and I think these are wonderful enough that uh, taking, uh, I guess, uh, two bites at the, the video pie, if you will, might be better. So, I'll pull these out frame, and let's uh, dig in and see what we have. So, you've already been staring at this one for a minute or so, but maybe it's a little more in focus down here. I don't always have the best depth of field. Woodward, Oklahoma, 1911. Grab my tongs. Uh, it's a postal card. Uh, and this is a uh, piece of postal stationery I don't see very often. Um, so, if at all, I've, I don't know that I've seen it before. So, it's a McKinley. Uh, President McKinley. Interesting. And uh, a nice little note on the back. And I love this. This is fantastic. So we have um, obviously Jefferson there, two cent Jefferson. Um, obviously the uh, larger format stamp from Xenia, Ohio, 1904. The flag cancel. And then we have a, a looks like a Wilming something Wilmington maybe. Cancel on the back. Yeah. Yeah, going to Wilmington, Ohio. Wilmington, Ohio. Great. Uh, Greensburg, PA, 1910. Flag cancel over a Franklin. Nice, clean stamp. And our, what do we have? The Ford. So we have, um, interesting enough, looks like a man on horseback with a bunch of dogs uh, in a river. Uh, when, you know, when it says the Ford, it's usually a place where you cross the river, a shallow spot to ford the river. Here we have one from uh, Kalameth Falls, Oregon, 1916. Flag cancel over one cent, Washington. And oh, look at this, a Christmas. And what a great depiction of Santa Claus there with a pipe. Some holly and berry, holly leaves and berries. What a nice scene, actually, in the village there with. Nicely done. Next up, we have Freeport, Illinois, 1912. Flag cancel over one cent Franklin. And, oh, interesting that it's upside down. Flip that way. Birthday greetings. I wish you health and love and mirth. That's a birthday one. I'm curious. I'm just going to do a flip here. So we go from this perspective over the top to be upright. I'm going to take a look at the next one and see if it's the same flip or whether, uh, whether or not it is. Quincy, Illinois, 1908. Flag cancel over a different Franklin one cent. And let's see what we get. Haha, -ha, no, they are different, right? So um, the other one you flipped vertically. This one should have been flipped horizontally. And I think most have been a horizontal flip, if my memory serves. Uh, it's wonderful at sunset. Of course, we don't know where that is at sunset, unless it sells on the other side. Uh, I'm just checking to see if it did. Doesn't say where that is at sunset, but still a nice picture. So here we go. Everett, Washington, 1908. I've been to Everett, Washington. Again, for work. It's where most of my travel experience comes from. Uh, and here we have Lower Paradise River, Washington. On this one we have 
Wheeling, West Virginia. Looks like a 1910 with a neat flag cancel with a one in it. And the card is hardiest. Congratulations. I don't know what are we congratulating them for. Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to read this handwriting. At least not quick enough to do on camera. Taylorville, Illinois. And I can't clearly read the date on that one. December 20th, 7 p.m., but the year to me is unclear. Uh, although I see a 1910 in the handwriting, so that's probably close enough. And we have a lovely winter scene. Uh, here is a postcard. And what's interesting is we do this today, right? But uh, somebody contemporarily, or maybe just when the, maybe it was a family postcard that was sold somewhat more recently, has obliterated the names and address. Uh, which is fair enough. Uh, just don't always expect it on these older ones. Uh, 1910 Bath, Maine. Yeah, I've been there many times. Uh, flag cancel with a one in it. Bath, Maine is known for its um, military shipbuilding. Portland, Maine Public Gardens, Deering Oaks. Deering being uh, a local uh, milk company, I believe. <laughs> And Lewiston, Maine. Again, I've been there many times. Uh, 1908. What do we have here? Lake Auburn looking from the grove. And we have uh, Lodi, California, 1911. Fly cancel over... Franklin. I like the darker and almost mottled cardstock. I want to look at this fancy side. New Year's greeting. And then just a simple from spot. So really just truly a quick greeting card. Although there is some room for correspondence. Uh, we have uh, Fairbury, Nebraska, 1916. I don't see Nebraska very often. Fly cancel over one cent Washington. And Dam Fairbury, Nebraska. Fairbury, Fairbury, I should say. Fulton, Missouri. Topeka, Kansas on the other side, it looks like. Uh, again, I'm not seeing the year clearly, although 43 handwritten in the card. In the State Capitol, Topeka. What a building. It's an ornate roof on the, the dome to that. Not just simply gilded, but appears to be designed as well. Here we have Pomona. Where is Pomona? California. That sounds about right. 1910. Fly cancel with a one. And this purple stamp in here. To avoid delay in delivery, have your mail addressed to street and number. Okay. Saw something similar to that before, but the number part was uh, truncated, and I guessed wrong. I assume street and city. I'm thinking street was inclusive of number, but Here we go, Brooklyn, New York, 08, Station 5. And Christmas Bells, a oh, Christmas card. Here we go, Denver, Colorado, 1913, South Denver Station. And another Christmas card. Watertown, Mass. Not too far away. 1912. Galen Street Bridge. Lando's Plant from Charles River Road, Watertown, Mass. Oh, this is a neat one. 
Philadelphia, PA, Broad Street Station. It's a heavy one. I'll check the inside of this one. Uh, Boston, Mass. Again, two-hour drive. Cambridge Station. Oh, there's two. That's why it was heavy. This was below it. Delaware, Ohio, 1912. And best birthday wishes. Oh, I, I can't tell you what the flower is. I've definitely seen it before. But Paris, Kentucky, 1913. Another McKinley postal stationery. Probably don't have that one either. That's nice. And uh, just just a message on the back. Kansas City, Missouri, 1908. Going to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Santa Fe Trail through Penn Valley Park, Kansas City, Missouri. Here we have uh, Center Park, Kansas. There's no Clay Park. Oh, no, Clay Center, sorry. Kansas. I don't know why I said park. Uh, 1919. Flight cancel over again. A very crisp looking Washington. Almost the paper has a green tinge to it on that one. And uh, let's see, we have a cute girl in a bonnet here. Um, sincere good wishes for a happy new year. We have Trinidad, Colorado, 1907. Flight cancel again. And what is this building here? Um, Gardena's Hotel, Trinidad, Colorado. Then the sender had breakfast here. Here we have Zion City, Illinois. Um, I'm losing the year. Uh, under the in the block of the postcard, I'd have to look closer to see if I could figure it out. Um, but it looks like an 05 here on this side, and it is the residence and stables of the first apostle, John Alexander, Zion City, Illinois. Illinois. Lorraine, Ohio, 1909. Flag canceled and upside down Franklin. And on the other side, we have Institution for the Blind, Columbus, Ohio. Let's see, coming up, Dubuque, Iowa, 1910, flag cancel, and High Bridge, Eagle Point, Quincy, and Dry, Bock, Dry Dock, sorry. Looks like they float a lot of logs down that river as well. Berkeley, California, 1905, Merry Christmas. Or Xmas in this case. Uh, here we have a foreign one, Italy. I'm sorry, let me clean up my space here. Airmail to California. Pair of stamps. Again, I love it when there's multiple stamps on the cover. Gives it sort of that combination variety. Oh, look at this. A one in three shilling from Ireland. Uh, beautiful, beautiful design. 1961, it looks like. Love it. Oh, here we have a Grand Army of the Republic stamp, GAR there. Kansas City, Missouri, 1950. Look at that cancel. Kansas City Centennial. That's a bold one. Ooh, I don't think I'm going to try to say that. I'll try, but I'll embarrass myself. Concho Hawken, Pennsylvania, 1910. Jay Wood Brothers. Uh, here's one from Austria. Look at that neat design. Children playing. And 
a German card. Wonderful. Bremen. Cancelled. 1903. And what do we have here? Can I figure this out? Bathhouse, I believe. Possibly. Or maybe not. I'm probably mistranslating that. Rat. It says rat house, but I don't know what the rat prefix means. Obviously, you can look it up on Google Translate, uh, but won't take the time now. So here we have another postcard, Frankfurt at this time, looks like 1905, I think, and uh, going to Alexandria, PA, it was received then. Uh, how long did it take to get there? We were um, November 26th to December 8th, so a uh, week and a half. To get there. And here we have uh, Gruss aus Frankfurt. Uh, here's a neat one, another postcard from Germany, this time Munich with a Bavarian stamp, five Fenning, and again, incredible handwriting jealous and uh, well there's a, a baby if I've ever seen one with a nice uh, liter of beer they start young in Germany I guess I was lucky enough to um, go to I think it might have been opening day of Oktoberfest probably 10 years ago now in Munich again I was there for business and I only could stay for a couple hours it was the day I arrived so I was exhausted uh, having taken the, the long flight but, uh, you know, once-in-a-lifetime experience, so wonderful. And uh, I have a date on here of 1898 uh, on this side. Yeah, wonderful. Love that one. That might be one of my favorites out of the lot. Um, I've seen so many, uh, it's hard to say if it is my favorite, but at this moment it feels like it. Um, it'll take me several times going through uh, to, to really get all of this. Uh, so San Diego, California, 31, with a, another uh, airmail saves time with the airplane cancel over at Tucson, Washington. And somebody doing some math on the back. Getting down there, probably in the last 10 here. So we have, um, this one's a little harder to read, it's, it's pretty spongy, but it's from Spain. And I believe uh, that uh, chauffeur tax is a postage due of another 10 uh, centimes. So uh, that's going to be French, I believe. So probably Spain going to France. Yeah, it was from Spain, from Madrid, sent to France. Uh, so that's actually pretty neat. So uh, stamps from two different countries, one of which being a postage due. Wonderful. I love to see that kind of complexity. This makes it so much more interesting. And what a great scene here of Madrid, horse-drawn carriages, uh, looks like uh, tram cars, people in the street, wonderful. I've not been to Spain, believe it or not. I've been to quite a few countries. Spain is not one of them. And Heidelberg, Germany, look at that, Reichspost, that's an older one, love it from uh, or received in Boston Mass quite neat I'll have to look up that as well is that part of the envelope or is that added by the Postal Service I'm not sure uh, I'll have to learn about that and now we see the side where we have a bunch of buildings I'll let you read for yourself. 1897, handwritten there, May 30th. Here we have another one from Switzerland. Looks like 1909. There's one with four stamps from Argentina, 1964. And 
And here we are, another German one. Paul von Hindenburg, three finning. Uh, from Berlin. Don't quite read the date carefully. They are easily there. Um, maybe I see a one, so I would guess 31, maybe, based on the stamp, but I'm not sure. And a neat cancel. Looks like a phone, handheld phone. And this one this way. Oh, I love this. What a great design. Again, I'll probably have to translate this. I'm not going, I, I don't know enough German to to get even close to correct here, at least not the words I know. But uh, really kind of a, a really nice design. I wonder what it is. And is this the last one? We're down to it. An airmail, and I, that looks like maybe the German word for airmail, if I had to guess. Um, only contextually is the only uh, way I'm guessing there. Um, and then obviously German stamps. Oh, sorry, not German, Greece, Greek, so not the German. If I said German, I apologize. Greek, the Greek word possibly for airmails, and two Greek stamps. Going to the USA, and just a quick date on the back, it looks like. Okay, what a great lot of cards and covers. I know in part one, and also here again in part two, I promised that I would show you my Flag Cancel Encyclopedia book. Um, I bought this um, after receiving the first package from Mr. Witty of Cards and Covers uh, with all the Flag Cancels. So it was really interesting to me. Um, I didn't know they were so, um, so, so large of a topic and that there were so many issued. Uh, really opened my eyes and then, then the, the, this book helps with it. I think it was made in the, uh, in the 70s. Um, so in this case, Frederick Langford. I did show this in another video where I was answering a question just because I had just bought it then. Um, and I haven't gone into much detail, and I probably won't go into too much detail here again. Uh, someday, once I'm better at working with it, I'll show you how I utilize it. Uh, but essentially, here's the, the insides here, the cover page, uh, 76 Frederick Langford, original price $20. And it really is almost... Um, a document of, of what seems like fairly raw research. Um, it uh, it really gives an acknowledgement. Uh, it talks about um, how to use the book roughly. Uh, how to use the book. Um, I still haven't learned it very well. It has a, a quick summary of the numbers of varieties uh, based on state. So uh, in Alabama, for instance, we have 38 towns that use one with a total of, I believe, 32 varieties. Um, some of them uh, get much more complicated, uh, such as Massachusetts here with 161 towns and 833 varieties. Um, that may be the most complicated. Um, in the total of the continental U.S., 6,663 varieties, uh, at the time of printing at least. And a grand total of 6,891. Uh, so we have some dependencies, uh, sea posts, streetcars, naval ships, that sort of thing. Uh, digging in a bit further, we have um, glossary of terms, which is very helpful. And then as we get into um, here, it tells us how to read the listing. So there's town names, dial type, flag type, contents of the die space, year of installation or discontinuation. Uh, are, are both both are figures there, and um, value in f of flag in cash or percent points. I don't know what that means, um, but uh, in any case, uh, you know, being able to attribute your postmark to uh, one of their own varieties uh, for me is something I find uh, exciting. I like to always um, do the best attribution attribution that I can. Um, so we see some examples here. So Capitol Hill Station from Taft, California. I don't think I've seen that one yet, um, but I'll certainly be uh, looking through these. I've ordered some. Um, postcard and cover sleeves so that I can uh, better organize them. I know a lot of them already came in sleeves, but some that didn't I'll be putting in sleeves and then I think I can uh, put a, um, a document on the sleeve uh, that will allow me to document what I've learned about it. So that's my plan for the future. Uh, thanks for taking a look at my book. And uh, next up, because I, I did make two promises, uh, we'll dig into those German stamps. And as promised, I will pull down the three cards of stamps from Germany, which I'm very excited to see. We're going to start in order, I guess. We'll pull out the 
uh, ones from Danzig. I think, um, you know what, I will pause and, no, I'll leave it here. We'll, we'll go with the Zoom. I'm running out of battery, so I ought to wrap this up. So, Danzig. We have a 25. Let's say it'll be in frame here. A 20. Uh, let's see, an 80 over, I'm going to guess, actually I'm not going to guess, an 80 over something. I'll have to look them up to see what that is or look a little closer. A 60 over something. A 25 over something. These are all Germania issues, by the way. A 10 over something. And a 5 over something. So all mint except this one. Uh, really, really nice. I'm going to leave those out and hopefully have room for the next. Yeah, I think we will. And here we're into Morocco. So here we have uh, a Morocco overprint. Uh, 25 over 20. And there's two spellings of Morocco. So these are with K. Um, so earlier and later issues. And I can't remember which one's earlier and which one's later. Uh, but these ones have the, I'll get these in order if my battery doesn't run out on me. So these are with K, but then I see one here with the Morocco spelled with C's. It's a mint one. Morocco with C's. Uh, I'll be nitpicky and try to get them in order again. Oh, I'm going to give up now because now I found a three. Morocco with K's. Put that up in the top row. And then this one's even a completely different font, I believe, than either one of them. Ah, uh, it's even older. It's the Reich Post. Uh, 3 over 3. Those are wonderful. And now, let's see if I can get these Chinese ones out. So, we have a 20 cents... Uh, 10 cents. Those are still in frame, right? Um, a 4 cents. Working backwards here. And this one here looks like a 2. I'm going to start it here so I don't have to move the rest. And a 1. And we have a different print style here. We have, uh, so that's just again is going to be older because it's the Reich Post instead of the Deutsche Reich. Uh, another Reich Post. And then, let's see, I'm going to go up here. I think I have some real estate, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, those are still in frame. So China at a diagonal, which is even different yet. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I think that, you know, I, I've, I've promised he, these here in this video, but I think that these deserve maybe a little research on my part. Um, so I think I will do a separate video where we look at these again and in a little bit more detail. Uh, so, you know, look out for that one soon as well. Um, thanks again, Mr. Witty. I'm just always stunned at whatever you, you, whatever you send. Um, I've seen uh, a video where you sent uh, some stuff to Mallard Stamps as well, and that was wonderful. In fact, I'm overdue in commenting. I certainly wanted to comment that very day, and in fact, he showed what he was sending back. And uh, I think there was my, my comment was actually going to be about that. It was really interesting. He had um, uh, some covers related to... Um, a drug, uh, which was uh, essentially a truth serum, which I'm now forgetting the name of. Um, so, uh, you know, I hope that's enjoyable uh, for you uh, from Mallard Stamps. Um, and I hope I can send you something that you enjoy as well. Uh, I certainly enjoy and appreciate these. They're just really stunning. And, and I mean, look at those overprints. Absolutely amazing. So thanks again. And uh, for my audience, uh, thank you. And I hope you enjoy watching this.